All right, so I've just finished over here, and I'm going to turn my work. There is a little step here. Let me just show you this little step. I've got three loops on my hook, and that's my, my start of round two. Now, you could, if you wanted, take a little stitch marker, and you could place the stitch marker up here on one of the stitches and move it up as you go so that you can keep track of the round, rounds. I, I did not do that. Um, it just really gets in my way. I don't want to be taking this guy in and out of my work. And I'll show you why, and I'm going to bring this in real quickly. Here is the start. Now I know it's the beginning because I have yarn to prove it. This is the beginning chain right here. This is the beginning. Now you see it's a little, it's it's off a little bit right here. It's a little off because of the spiral. But once you seam that in, this is crochet after all, so it just comes together because it's very flexible that way and you just seam that together. But here is why I did not put a stitch marker. It's because I know that this is the first stitch because here is the yarn. And if you just follow that up, all the way up, see how the yarn it separates here so you know exactly where you're at and you follow it up all the way up. I can tell without any question that this is my first stitch and so when I finish this last round here I know that this is the first stitch and I I didn't waste time by putting in the stitch marker and that's just me if you want to put in the stitch marker and move it up go go for it it's just I didn't want to do it I didn't feel like it and to be honest with you this is a this is just a little cowl let me see if I can move this camera back this is just it's just a cowl for goodness sake if there is half of your round has you know nine rounds and the other side has eight I don't think anybody's gonna come up to you and oh wait a minute now you have one two three nobody's gonna notice it's gonna even out nobody's gonna really notice so I just really don't think it's necessary for something like this don't don't feel like you must waste your time isn't that pretty Wow, that's gorgeous. I need to put that on my desktop background or something. That is gorgeous. Okay, let's move it out of the way. So, come back to our work. And we've picked up stitches here. I can tell that this is the row, this is the hook side for picking up stitches because see how that guy is loopy? I can tell that. So now I'm going to move over and I'm going to remove some of these stitches. And the way to remove them is pull through two, just like you did before. And it will always be pull through two because this is a spiral. We never have the pull through one ever again. So pull through two, pull through two. Now remember to leave, whoops, go back up there. Remember to leave three stitches. Oh my goodness, really? There we go. <laughs> Okay, pull through two, and continue to do that all the way across until you have three stitches remaining. Pull through two, pull through two, all the way. Pull through two. And again, now if you notice, I am always going to be pulling up stitches with the blue. And I'm always going to be closing stitches with the white. And that's the way it's going to be for the entire project. So you'll know which stitch is doing what. Or which color is doing what. Always blue for pulling up, now see? We have three stitches. So now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to make sure that I don't cross my yarns so that they don't get all tangled. 
and we're going to try that stitch pattern again. So this may have you making new stitches and at the same time learning a new technique. So put the yarn in the front, insert your hook under the two vertical bars at the same time, yarn over and pull a loop through. Now yarn over and insert your hook into the back vertical bar, yarn over, pull a loop through. Now in the front, the yarn in the front, two vertical bars, and see this is one, two, three, one, two, three. Always end with the reverse when you set it down. Pull through two, now yarn over, come to the back, pull up a loop. Keep it loose, and the looser you keep this, the easier it's going to be to make the stitches. Two vertical bars, yarn over, pull through, that's a purl, but you're purling two together at the same time. Yarn over, and it does help to do this reverse stitch if you push if you push the stitch through to the back with your non-hook hand. And see it now I got it. Okay, now I've I've done one, two, three, one, two, three. Don't ever turn or set it down unless you're at three. So now I'm gonna turn and I'm going to continue closing the loops. And there is no rhyme or reason here about the number of loops, just how many feels comfortable to you. If you can fit several loops and your circle is not getting strained, if you can fit half of them on there, then that's that's perfectly fine. Um, just as, as long as it's not falling off this end and as long as it's not straining your work. Just there's no rhyme or reason just continue pulling lo loops until it's comfortable then you can turn all right now I'm going to turn always making sure that I'm not crossing my yarn you turn it one way one time and one way the other just to make sure you're not tangling now pull through two and again pull through two And again, one. And now, when I'm pulling through two, I've got this big guy right here. That's the yarn over. That's why that one looks different. It's the same stitch. It still has a front and vertical, front and back vertical bar, but it's just bigger. And I always know that's two. So that is also helpful when I'm counting. If I start to lose my place, I can tell that's two. That's always going to be two and three. And now we have three remaining. And we're going to turn over and start picking up loops again. So you see one side is picking up loops, one side is closing them. And you just do that all the time. Just keep going around and around and around and around there it's it's going to be exactly the same throughout the entire project and you're going to do three oh, I'm sorry you're going to do nine rounds total now if you do want something uh, with less height or more height you can keep going there is enough yarn in the skeins to keep going if you wanted but I did nine rounds and they're very easy to count when you do the stitch pattern and I will show you that in just a minute yarn over and pull up a loop that's three so yarn in front purl two together now yarn over and reverse. Okay, 
and you are going to just keep going and going and going and going and going you're doing exactly the same thing close up to the three then pull up more close into the three pull up more and you just keep going until there's nine rounds and let me grab the cowl again and let me try to zoom out here all right counting the rows is or the rounds very simple because I can count these guys here this is the one that I use to close so one two three four five six seven eight nine so I've done nine now once you've done nine rounds and you've gone and you've checked you've done fully nine rounds or you just want to close because you don't care because no one's going to count them I'm going to show you how to bind off this last round alright now let's say that I've just completed nine rounds and I've closed all the way up to the last three stitches now I'm going to go ahead and close these last three stitches this is where you're going to close them all the way so go ahead and close the last three One. this is a lot easier said than done when you're under the camera with this big huge bulky yarn and huge hook I'm going to close those last three All right you see they're completely closed now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to be working in the other direction again alright what I'm going to do is I am going to work as for simple stitch but I'm going to make a slip stitch so insert your hook as if you're making a simple stitch just under the front vertical bar yarn over pull a loop through that loop and also the one on the hook and keep this loose just like the beginning chain I want you to keep this one loose too now here's the yarn over but it's built the same way it has a front vertical bar and a back vertical bar insert your hook as if you're making a simple stitch yarn over pull a loop through that one and that one the one on the hook now you're just making a slip stitch it's something that you've done forever I'm sure but because it's made differently it seems like it's something different it's really really not so yarn over pull through that one and through that one and again keep this loose loosey-goosey right here don't go too tight or you won't get it over your head pull through that one and that one let's see I'm just making a slip stitch right across the top and you're going to do that all the way around now I'll show you why I wanted you to go in the back horizontal bar you see how nice this edge is right here see it's very pretty now if we come over here see this is what happens it's exactly the same as the top so it just it's a little pretty feature that you can do to make sure that your work looks nice it's just a little finishing technique so you're going to slip stitch all the way around until you get all the way to the beginning okay I've slip stitched all the way around and now I've finished the last slip stitch and cut off your yarn and then pull it through and now I'm going to just pull I'm just going to grab it a smaller hook I think let me get a smaller hook I don't have a needle handy oh, come on now where's the little hook I know I have one here we go a little hook now I'm going to insert my this this other hook from back to front and I'm going to pull that yarn through and see that what that's going to do that's going to cover up that 
that stitch there that is from the previous round, one that we didn't get to. And now I can weave in my end and it looks like I've got another one sitting right on top of it. You want me to do that again? Let's see. So I cut off and then I pull the strand all the way up through there. Now I skip that one that's the wrong color, insert my hook from back to front, and pull that loop through. Now come over here to the, the last one, and then pull that loop through. And I've made what appears to be another chain sitting on top of that one so it's continuous all the way around and now I can just weave in my yarn and, I'll, and then I have to come back over here and I have to seam this up now when you seam it up make sure that you pull it together right there and then you'll have a continuous round down there as well and that's it